Hey, I'm Tony Roach. I'm standing here with my good friend, Cody Roswick. Both of us love chasing perch throughout the winter months. You know, we make a lot of our livings chasing perch throughout the winter months. It, you know, it's, I love perch fishing. I don't care if they're deep, shallow, wherever. Well, it's just one of those species that bites great in the winter. They're fun, they're, they can be electric. Cody, what are some of your go-to presentations for fishing perch out in the Dakotas? Well, I would say that I kind of give them the one-two punch, especially when I'm looking for fish. I fish, I, I fish a lot of spoons, uh, maybe even some small rattle bait, something that's got some vibration and attracts perch to your area. Uh, buckshot rattle spoons, day in and day out, are uh, something that attracts fish and, and catches them and you, you kind of have to call them in. Then once you, once you do call them in, then I slow things way down. Uh, small tungsten jigs, uh, you know, small offerings and uh, that's when the finesse really begins once you locate them. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way. I think a buckshot rattle spoon comes to mind, you know, as like my go-to bait for perch fishing just because when I'm looking for fish, you know, I, I'm, I'm a lot like you, whereas in the most of the winter months, I'm out in this big bass basin looking for these fish that are always a moving target, you know. So yep. by dropping that buckshot down, it's it's nice to be able to get down there fast. Even when, when things are really cold or your line's icing up, you can get that down to the bottom try to call those fish into your location and then downsizing from there. For me, I tend to fish a lot of plastics. You know, we get a lot of uh, mayfly hatches, different bug hatches, even blood worms that start popping out of the mud uh, later in the winter months. So, yeah. you know, if you can call them into your location, catch a few aggressive fish, and then if the rest are just down there, then instantly downsizing. But for me, I would love to just use a spoon all day long, like yeah. pick up the aggressive ones and keep moving. However, it's just not reality. You know, there's yeah. times where it's so cold and you can't move and using those plastics, uh, you know, you put three or four or five more in the, the pail yeah. or on the ice and then, and then move on. But yeah, the weather dictates a lot of what we do, but, uh, and there's times when you're just better off you're sitting on a, uh, some lethargic fish and then just grinding out the fish as the day progresses. And then there's, there's also some bite windows during the day where you know they might go for a half hour or an hour where they bite really good and then they taper off again. So kind of knowing when to stay and knowing when to keep searching is the key sometimes. But um, first of all, you got to find them, and then uh, the grinding factors when you slow everything way down. We've got a lot of freshwater shrimp, a lot of macro invertebrates, and blood worms out here. And a lot of these fish are so lethargic because they're so well fed that we tend to grind them out more and more all the time. Sure. This year was just one of those examples. We had a lot of, lot of snow, heavy snow cover. It was dark down there. The fish were real lethargic and we did a lot of grinding on them this year and it was, it was pretty effective, but you had to make it, take advantage of those windows when you got, you know, 20 minutes, half hour, an hour where they bit pretty good and then and then, you know, use your time wisely, whether you're searching, searching for those uh, uh, few active ones or just kind of grind out the five or six in that, you know, 15, 20 minute window. So. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I like these high sun days. I think when the high sun days come around, uh, the fish yeah. are moving, they're, they're moving a lot more. And, you yeah, know, obviously that's a good point. as you progress into later in the winter in particular, you know, I always think of, my favorite time of year to fish perch is, you know, late March, even into the first part of April where those fish start to slide in a little bit shallower, you know, oxygen levels start to rise, things are yeah. starting to happen, the water's starting to warm up, you get a high Sunday like this and I'll move into shallow water. And for us, you know, we obviously don't have the freshwater shrimp, but they go from invertebrate eaters to moving into those shallow water locations where they're feeding on young of the year perch. You know, perch are notorious cannibals, but also mm -hmm. bait fish. I was just on a lake the other day before I came out here. I dropped an underwater camera down and there was just thousands of shiners in the shallows. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. The perch were there. I mean, wherever the food's at, that's where the perch are going to be. And yeah. uh, I love high sun days like this. The warmer, the better. On those kind of snowy, overcast days, I always think, wow, the walleye fishing is going to be better <laughs> yeah. than the perching. Yeah, that's yeah. Out here, or we do we tend to target the walleyes in the low light periods, and then those cloudy days are better for walleyes. And then the high sun is definitely a key to good perch fishing. And, and that's yeah. the thing throughout the winter months. One thing that I love about perch is they're always usually biting. 
you know, day in and day out. Yeah, you're gonna have a few bad days where they're not feeding, but for the most part throughout the winter months, it's hard to beat perch fishing because they're always biting somewhere in the lake. Yeah, yeah, though they're, they're a prolific uh, prey species, uh, great game fish, and they're so good to eat. Uh, you know, the shrimp fed ones out here, they grow so fast, they say their lifespan's only like five to seven years. So they, they really pack on the pounds out here and that's, that's what makes them so much fun is that they're, uh, they're plentiful. They're, you know, they're very prolific little, little fish, so. You know, perch fishing, because they can be uh, one of those fish that are super electric, but they can also be very finesse. Mm -hmm. Having the right rod reel combo with the right line makes a big difference, you know. Uh, I see a lot of people that come out that may have a lot of memory in their line or old mono, and yeah. they're just not feeling that bite. And even though when perch are aggressive, even though they're firing up off the bottom, doesn't mean they hit hard. They bite extremely light. So having the right gear always makes a big difference. You know, if, if one person's uh, whaling on them, the next person's using the same thing, supposedly, but yep. you look at their rod reel combo, it can make a huge difference. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Just having the having a really light, soft tip on your rod makes all the difference. Because they, a lot of times they just come up and they just barely tap it. I mean, you just ever so slightly see your line twitch or your tip of your rod move when you get a bite and just knowing knowing that and you brought up the fact that you can't have any coil in your line you know use a heavy enough uh, presentation a, you know a small tungsten jig or a small spoon where it, it uh, eliminates that coil in your line I think that's probably one of the one of the better little tips you can have for perch or finicky walleyes. That and perch you can't overlook locations like today is, is a prime example of perch fishing basin where you know, we're drilling a bunch of holes, but they're right on this one spot, you know, perch key in on one little area. And that goes for structure fishing too, where they'll be in one little weed bed or one little section of timber and being on the spot, on the spot, and, and really drilling a lot of holes to find that. Sometimes your hole spacing is only five, 10 feet apart, but uh, having that many holes really helps you get on the spot, on the spot. If you're spacing your holes out 20, 30, 40, 50 yards apart, you're missing a lot of perch sometimes because they're so tight into one little location. Yeah, it's just amazing why they uh, huddle so much in certain days and certain scenarios is a mystery, but they definitely do. It's almost like there's a colander or there's a, you know, like a small, small little area and they're, they're comfortable amongst each other and they don't really move around at times. You just gotta keep picking away at those, you know, at that small football field style area. When it comes to, uh, perch in general, I tend to go towards more of the panfish rods, the really light tip rods, the, you know, the noodle rods, so to speak. And then I usually match them up with uh, a no stretch line. Just having those no stretch qualities, we're typically in 20, 30, 40, even 50 feet deep to target these perch. And that no stretch line, it has less coils in it. And then obviously you're able to feel those soft, subtle bites a lot better with that no stretch capability. I'm the same way, I, I use, you know, a lighter, obviously something with good backbone but a real good sensitive tip and I tend to fish a lot of braid um, even no stretch line no stretch mono uh, the one thing for me is um, when it comes to perch in general is having also good electronics but also dialing in and using your zoom feature you know if you're fishing perch yeah. perch a lot of times where I'm fishing anyway they're on the bottom and having a good zoom feature so you can you know it's it's that it's that eye hand coordination where you can watch every little subtle movement of your rod tip but also on your graph as well and you can see the mood of the fish a lot more by by zooming in on your electronics so just having that one two punch and having everything right makes all the difference in the world yeah electronics are definitely key and that zoom feature is huge and like you were saying you when you during the course of maybe a couple of fish catches, you can almost identify which fish are more active than others. So you can really read the mood of the fish and you can, you know, if you, if you had a, like three, four of them came in, but only one bit, or if you had, uh, you know, the, just the, the lone Joes come in and look at you and then go away, come in and look at you and go away. You, you can just, you can kind of base your presentations and base, base your jigging cadence around 
the mood of the fish. So electronics are really key when it comes to knowing what to do and how to react to those bites. Out here in the Dakotas in general, we've got so many macroinvertebrates, there's so many shrimp, there's so many bloodworms that these fish just blow up so fast. Um, their growth rates are exceptional. I'm sure they're some of the fastest, fastest fish growth rates in the whole nation is out here in the Dakotas because like literally every hole you drill there's bugs there's bugs coming up there's bugs there's shrimp there's all these little macro invertebrates and it's the the base of our fishery yeah in Minnesota I mean obviously with the glacial lakes and and you know these big natural lakes that we have in Minnesota that perch fishing varies drastically from lake to lake whereas out here it's a little more uniform you know at home you can have lakes where you just can't grow jumbo perch or it takes a really long period of time because you don't have that forage base but then other other lakes you take like Mille Lacs or Winnebagosh or Leech or Lake of the Woods where uh, those fish can grow pretty rapidly because there's a really good forage base of uh, mayfly nymphs and fish flies and blood worms and um, they're really really fertile so perch can grow pretty rapidly but then you take another lake right down the road and they just they don't get very big and they're stunted and, yeah. and so you know perch fisheries Minnesota vary yeah. drastically because we don't have that you know freshwater shrimp forage base. Yeah sorry phone's going off. That's all right it happens. Well I want to thank you guys for talking for a little bit and yeah, yeah. Get, get out perch fishing right? Yeah the best is yet to come. Right on.